Welcome to our lecture online. Taking a look at this JE advanced test problem, well, you're not surprised that they make it more difficult than it already was in itself. We're talking about the Doppler shift, and the Doppler shift is always a little bit confusing, but then they throw in, and on top of that, the wind blowing along the path of travel of the sound. So how does that affect the answers? Well, let's take a look. First, let's read the problem. It says two vehicles, each moving with speed u, on the same horizontal straight road are approaching each other. Wind blows along the road with velocity w. One of these vehicles blows a whistle of frequency f1. An observer in the other vehicle hears the frequency of the whistle to be f2. The speed of sound in still air is capital V. The correct statement is or are because one of, one of these statements could be correct. And so they say if the wind blows from the observer to the source, then F2 is greater than F1. Or if the wind blows from the source to the observer, then F2 is greater than F1. Or they turn it around, if the wind blows from the observer to the source, F2 is smaller than F1. Or if the wind blows from the source to the observer, then F2 is smaller than F1. So you can see that if A is correct, then C cannot be correct. And if B is correct, then D cannot be correct or vice versa. All right, so first let's make a little drawing to get a feel of what this is about. So we have two vehicles. Vehicle number one traveling this way with velocity u, and vehicle number two traveling this way with velocity u. So let's say that this vehicle is the source, and this vehicle is the, um, is the observer. Now, let's leave the wind out of it for a moment. Let's write down the equation that we use to solve this problem. So the frequency observed, which is F2, is equal to the frequency of the source, which is F1, times the velocity of sound in air, plus or minus the velocity of the source, or I should say, of, of the observer, so I'll write O for the observer, divided by V plus or minus the velocity of the source. Now, in this case, we don't need to write observer and source because we know the velocities are the same. But how do we determine the plus and minus? Well, again, let's leave the wind out of it for a moment and rewrite this as F1 times V, V, U, and U. So now we need to determine the signs. So let's only look at the source from, uh, no, we'll start with the observer because at the top. If the observer is moving towards the source, and the source is putting out sound like this, and the observer is approaching the source, then it's going to meet up with the waves more quickly. They will appear to be closer together because the observer is moving in this direction. Closer together means smaller wavelength, larger frequency. That means we need to have a plus here because then the frequency observed must be greater than the frequency from the source because the observer is moving towards the source. Now, when the source is moving towards the observer, it puts out a wave, then, it, then the wave moves away, then it puts out another wave, but if the, if the source moves towards the observer, observer, then the waves will be closer together because when the next wave is put out, the source is closer to the observer than when it put out the previous wave. So it will again cause the waves to be closer together, smaller wavelength, greater frequency, that means in the denominator we need to have a negative because we want the denominator to be small to create a larger frequency. So because of this, we can see that F2 is going to be larger than F1. That is, of course, in still air. Now in still air, we realize that F2 will be larger than F1, and that will be, okay, that will be the case regardless of, again, in still air, that will always be the case. So we know that these two will be correct in still air, and these have to be wrong in still air. Now, the question is, will that now change because there's a wind blowing? That the wind could be blowing towards the observer, or the wind could be blowing towards the source. So in case one here, it says, if the wind blows from the observer to the source, well, what would that do? Well, if the wind blows, it simply would carry the, the waves to the observer faster. If the waves are carried to the observer faster, then of course, it kind of has two effects. First of all, the observer will see the waves coming faster because they're traveling faster. Essentially, it's almost like the speed of sound in air is increased. 
and the speed of sound in air being increased has no effect on the relationship between F2 and F1. There's another hint we can take here. The fact that they didn't give us actual numbers, simply U, W, and V, well, it shouldn't really make any difference if the wind is blowing or not in the relationship between F2 and F1. So since the wind is blowing from the source to observer, we know that A still must be, be true because essentially it caused the waves to travel the observer faster. So that's still true. How about if the wind is blowing in the other direction? Well, if the wind is blowing in the other direction, what's going to happen is that the waves are be going to be traveling slower because the air is moving in this direction. But the source is still moving towards the observer, the observer is still moving towards the source, so even though the waves are traveling slower because the wind is blowing this way, the effect still is going to be that the observer will hear a higher frequency than the source. That means that this is true again, regardless of the direction of the wind. And that means that C and D must still be wrong because F2 is never smaller than F1 if the observer and the source are moving towards each other. So the answer is A and B and C and D are not correct. And that is how it's done. And I think we can do this one in three minutes. If you don't talk so much. If we don't talk so much. <laughs> okay. Smoky.